So we had the honor of inviting Mr. Claudio Zampoli to Miami right before COVID uh, started. And we sort of, we didn't plan to interview him or anything. We literally just turned the cameras on and asked him to start telling stories. Now, if you don't know who Claudio Zampoli is, Claudio started as a test driver at Lamborghini while Bob Wallace was developing the P400 into the Mira S and actually developing the Yoda, um, the famous Yoda, the original car that was destroyed. And it was so important to me to try to capture that moment in time. I mean, listen, Bob Wallace unfortunately passed away many years ago and Claudio had been so instrumental in the development of the SV and even a potential SV evolution um, that was never produced by Lamborghini. But, but he was a guy at sort of the, the, the crossroads of a very important period. And he told us some great stories um, about Bob Wallace. And then Claudio eventually became a very, very famous uh, technician. Uh, he was servicing Lamborghinis. Uh, you could call it semi-warranty work in the 1970s for celebrities such as Rod Stewart, uh, Sammy Hagar. Um, he was actually featured in some cool uh, pop culture uh, music videos and different things like that. And then he eventually he ended up selling, I believe, a 250 GTO, a Mura SV. Um, we had his former Mura SV, so that was the reason that we actually invited him to Miami. But he sold those cars to start Chizetta, uh, Chizetta. And um, listen, Claudio um, in period only produced nine cars. But after purchasing one of the Chizetta V16 cars, I was really sort of blown away by his level of perfection um, and his level of understanding and engineering. Um, he's a, he's might be a controversial character, um, and I think that followed his whole life. I mean, he's a he's he's definitely got a strong opinion. But the guy's a genius, and it was an honor to sit with him uh, to listen to some stories about Ferruccio and and importantly also about the blue Chizetta that we hadn't purchased at the time. I think we are about to purchase it. And he told us some great history and uh, hope you guys enjoy. There he is, the man. Uh, <laughs> oh, this, this is not its original. That's right. It looks like it's missing. Correct. Yeah. The oil break is great around yes. here. Um, but you know, what's this. that? Mechanical is nice though. It's too high. You it know, would, it's it too wouldn't fit. It wouldn't really fit. You, okay. you can't <laughs> leave it. <laughs> Maybe I'll just leave like the mirror red. How about little rubber today? No one puts that back under the chrome. Yeah, but it's the, he'd say that's the sign of a good, good, a good car. Yeah. Right? The return fuel. Do <laughs> you like it or not? His Mira SV, my favorite. I've never, you know, I've never seen a Chisetta. I've never seen. In, in Santa That's in, in Santa Agata. So that's. In Rodaggio. In Rodaggio. In Rodaggio. <laughs> you look at the engine, you say, that's all. <laughs> you were right. He owned that car first. It was a first. Yeah. The guys who restored it. It was built with your hands, you know? You're the legacy. And if we don't document these things in 20, 30 years, who's going to be the one telling the story? Not the right person. I'll let you know in 30 years what the. Yeah, with Lamborghini, I applied right away for test driving and development. Of course, when I got there, I met with uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini, and then he asked me who I was. I said, I'm so-and-so, my name. I said, ah, yeah, you are t t the one who wants to be a test driver. I said, yeah. In the meantime, Bob was passing by. He said, hey, Bob, here is your man here. You have to know Lamborghini is really rough. It doesn't have really nothing diplomatic. <laughs> but it was funny anyway. So then Bobby took me for around the factory and I got the job and, uh, and I, I did the training. 
I wanted to do the training to know more about uh, the Lamborghini because before I always had Ferrari in mind. I was for many years. So I, I felt myself very well. The fact it was like a family. It was a few people. And uh, like, like I said, it's like a family. And I like it right away, more than Ferrari. Then after the training, I start to do, go, go out with cars and test driving and, and make notes, a lot of notes, what, what I, I think it was wrong. And some it was done, some they said, forget it. So then I start to work in evolution, which it would have been, because I told to the Pier Luigi Vecchi, he was a, a very close engineer, but Ferruccio, because he was working on the tractor, and he was, he, was, um, he trusted Lamborghini, he was very, he's like his, his boy. And I told him, I said, you know, the Countess, it looks like it's not gonna be in production so soon. Why won't we just do it, maybe even 25 or 50 cars, and also for the, uh, the US market, because the Mura was never, it never worked for the US market, the impact and everything. And I, I was, I get, very good solution to do to pass the DOT and DPA with a fuel injection. Well, I don't want to go in, in detail, but there was a, several things to modify. But the, the line of the mule will be stay there. It's just the front will be a little bit different for the impact. Remember the 2.5 Miles impact, yes. the crap. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it was just an improvement, not the evolution that I was thinking to do it. I mean, they were nice. I mean, the car is really, it's got the dry sump, it's got the split. I think it also has got the limited slip in there. and. Uh, something that the Mura, they never use in production car, which the Mura really need uh, limit slip. So it's an improve that even if they would have continued to do it, it would be, oh, uh, no problem selling it. And also Skazi was negative and said, you know, we got some Mura, we don't sell this as well as we were thinking. And then the, so they decided not to do anything and wait for the Countess. Yes. It was a mistake, so then you my came, opinion. Yeah, and then you came to the US and opened, it was like an authorized through Lamborghini, the warranty work or? Yeah, because I don't know if you know or remember that modern sports car, they purchased Lamborghini. They were the importer for Lamborghini in New York, in 11th Street. And they say, we want to organize the dealer network in the US because it's, very, it's still a good market. So they sent me over, they asked me if I want to do it. And I accepted. And I was doing a great job. I had a school in Arbor City for the technician to come in and get trained for the new car and the old car. But then, all of a sudden they said there's no more car legal for the US, especially California. I said, if you want to come back. And then I said, well, I like California, I'm going to stay here a few more months, which I'm still here now. <laughs> but in, in that time, the factory was a turmoil. Yes. People were trying to buy the factory for speculation and some, uh, yeah, buy and selling to make a few bucks until the Mimram, they came in. With Mimram, they were very good people. They had, they had the money 
to develop. They pay all the supplier because there was a big debts. But then they got discouraged for some reason. The two brothers, the, they decided to sell the, the Lamborghini. So let's, if you don't mind, I'd love to ask a few more questions. Um, and this, I think, is, is important to the story, your story, and obviously that car's story, is how did and what inspired you to create a supercar company? Well, in a way, I, I got this question from all the magazine, the Specialized magazine when I was in, in Geneva. But it's very simple. I'm nobody. My name is, is, is no, nobody. So if I do a four-cylinder, it's been done, uh, a five-cylinder, six-cylinder, 10-cylinder, 12-cylinder, even everyone did 12-cylinder, even Japanese and American. So if I would have built a 12-cylinder, it was nothing new, nothing that people said, oh man, what's this? So that's why the 16-cylinder, but not just 16-cylinder, it's transverse, which nobody ever did before that. Myself and my people, we worked together. We were a little skeptics, skeptics if it works. So that's why we built a prototype. But even the prototype, he had a cast sixteen cylinder block. Although people in some magazine, they said the two Uraco motor welded together. Because they're working for us, they said, oh, maybe they are 308 welded together. And then they said, oh, if it's not, it must be a thought there is Technically, it's impossible to do it, to weld two blocks and have the, the power train right in the middle. Felt a little upset. I did it. I know it's a crazy thing. Everyone told me, I said, you're crazy, you're crazy. But then, when I finished, put it together, we started up and bought it. I mean, the old building, the people that were working, they came down because the old building was vibrating. <laughs> and the piece, there was no muffler, just straight exhaust. Boy, and then we, we came with bottle, we celebrate because there was never, we didn't know if it was gonna work. From then, then, uh, then I, I went to a, a dyno test in a facility uh, near, um, near the factory. But later on, the Bugatti, Artioli let me use one of his cells to do all the testing as well, for free, nothing. I was really, they were very well supported. They really helped me that a lot. Because at the time, we didn't have a lot of money too. I have beautiful cars. I was partnered with the GTO. I had 275 Ferrari. Um, oh, the, the uh, Cali California Spider, and also the show wheelbase. So I said, if I want to do it, so I have to sell all these cars. <laughs> Which the price is not, at the time it was not as today price. <laughs> But I managed, I managed the, the engine I did it by my own. Giorgio came after the engine was built. But the impact when I, I was in Geneva, it was incredible. An incredible, never one expected. There were people, they jump over the, the, the you know, in Geneva, they, you have a boot, and you divide the, with the wood panel. Man, they were jumping over the panel, and then I had to call the security they, because they were breaking to see the car. It was an incredible success, really. I was not expecting, no one. But you know, it was a, a good styling. 
a 16 cylinder transverse. Even the people from um, BMW and Mercedes, they came over and with measuring tape, they were measuring everything. They couldn't believe that a 16, a 16 cylinder was in there. But when they see the layout is transverse, because everybody think it can't be possible, 16 cylinder. Because if you look at the car, if you don't know, it doesn't look like uh, a 16. So that it was an incredible success. There. Well, as I told you before, the blue car is my favorite. I mean, if I had the money, I would have pursued that car. But it's a car that uh, it was meant to be for the Sultan of Brunei. He ordered three cars through a middleman, which the middleman he was working for the Sultan, he was the Singapore Ferrari dealer or importer, no, well, a, a dealer. But then I believe he liked the blue so much that he delivered the two black to the Sultan and the blue he kept it for himself and he put it in the showroom with the Ferrari cars. <laughs>